So this came across my desk this morning. This may be impacting you. It's impacting people around the world right now. The Apple outage. Apple, iCloud, Apple services, all these things are apparently down. And Apple outage is affecting Apple Music, the App Store, podcasts, and other services. Several of Apple's cloud services seem to be having issues right now. Now you may say, well, this is a travesty. This is awful. What does it mean for Apple stock? Does it mean that stock is going to decline massively? Does it mean we're going to see these massive drawdowns in the equity because, you know, bad things are happening with the business? Well, I want to show you something. This is the current stock price of Apple. This is Apple today. Despite the outage, despite this negative news publicity, despite the negative things going on, the stock is up. Up 0.38%. The stock is untouched by the controversy surrounding the business, by the supposed outage. This shows how firmly entrenched this company is, how high quality this business is. Because when you can have negative things not only happening on a media level, but also tangibly within your business, I think it's a very tangible thing to have your services out for a few hours, and for the stock price not to move, to not be impacted by that at all, I think that's indicative of the quality of the company. The strength, the depth of that economic moat, the absolute prowess, prowess exuded by this business. So if we have a look at Apple on a fundamental level, if we analyze this business, it tells the same story. Although our cash to debt ratio isn't ideal, we have a cash to debt ratio of 0.52 below a one to one ratio, still a fantastic amount of cash on hand. And when you take into account the free cash flow flowing into their business, think about Apple product sales. Think about service sales, obviously not today, but most days, think about the amount of free cash flow coming in. Massive free cash flow accreting to their business on a daily basis. And so despite this low cash to debt ratio, still a massive amount of cash on hand. Massive cash on hand supplementing their debt repayments and allowing them to make acquisitions. Very advantageous position. Very favorable economic moat for the company, and that's exuded by a high Altman score. An Altman score of 7.29, indicating an immense degree of safety with the business, very little risk of financial default. Is Apple going away? Is Apple going to fail as a business? I don't think so. I think the company that Warren Buffett allocates 41% of his portfolio to probably has a decent economic moat. Probably has a degree of financial stability, not only in good times, but also in bad. This company's a behemoth. An absolute tank of a company. This can take hits, and it can give them out too. Very, very powerful. And when we talk about taking hits, when we talk about handing out hits, when we talk about the profitability of this company, look at the profitability. Net margins of 26.58%. Every dollar of revenue that comes into their business, they maintain 26.58% of that as pure profit. Usually when we think of a hardware company, a company selling hardware oriented profits, products, if we had net margins around 15%, we'd be impressed. We'd be like, that's a decent hardware business. But this company is posting net margins of 26.58%. Absolutely astonishing. Historically the best they've achieved and on an industry basis, very, very top tier. Returns on equity, the same story. Returns on equity of 150.21%. Absolutely outstanding. And it's the same thing with returns on assets. Returns on assets of 28.68%, phenomenal profitability, a very, very attractive company on a profitability basis. So there is financial strength. There is profitability. There is the wide economic moat that we know because this type of thing isn't bashing down the business. This type of thing, if anything, actually raised the stock price in a day, ever so slightly. When you look at companies, I think the single most important thing to assess is how dominant is it? How wide is that economic moat? How sure are you? Because you know what the number one rule of investing is? Don't lose money. You know what rule number two of investing is? Don't forget rule number one. And how's the best way to achieve those two rules? How's the best way to not lose money and to not forget to not lose money? I think it's buying businesses like this. Buying companies with this degree of financial strength and financial stability Apple isn't going away. The depth of that moat is unrivaled, despite Morningstar's rating of a weak, weak economic moat or whatever they're saying, absurd. So you've got profitability, you've got financial strength, everything is there, wide economic moat. What people take issue with when it comes to Apple 
is the valuation. People often say, well, you know, Apple's grown so large, it's grown so big. How can it keep growing? How can people justify that? Well, let's have a look at the PE. You got a PE of 27.16. Perhaps a little high for some of your liking. You may think 27 is too high. Growth is already perpetuated. This company isn't going to keep growing at a stable rate going forward. I disagree. I think given the quality of their product base, the competency of their management, the various factors on a secular basis prevailing around the company right now, the potential for an Apple car, the potential for an AR VR headset transitioning into the metaverse, I think a 27 PE isn't unjustified. But let's back that up. Let's, let's reinforce the value of this PE with a DCF equation. A DCF analysis showing us the actual cash flows of the company, how much is flowing in, how much is flowing out, how much is this business actually tangibly worth? Let's run a DCF. And if we run that on the earnings per share basis to start off with, Utilizing a discount rate of 9% for our cash flows, 9% of course, taking into account the increased rates coming from the Fed right now, the Federal Reserve increasing rates at 0.25% this month and also going forward, naturally a higher discount rate will be justified. Our normal earnings per share figure of $6.04, taken down here for a 12 month trailing basis and this, this is where there's going to be debate. This is where there's going to be disconcertion among investors, what is an appropriate growth rate for Apple? What growth rate should we be utilizing for this company given the fact that it's exuded so much growth over the past decade? A fair question, a fair debate, and certainly not a debate I'm going to end. This will continue to go on after this video is posted. If we have a look at growth rates, a growth rate of 14.7%, that's a 10-year growth rate. Five-year growth rate, 18.8%. One-year growth rate, massive jump in demand for their products during the pandemic. So a one-year growth rate of 63.2%. So we see very impressive growth. In fact, accelerating growth over the past decade. Now, I believe that given the positive secular trends around the business, given the potential growth avenues going forward, and given the competency of their management, you know, continued growth, growth at around 17%, slightly lower than their five-year growth rate, slightly higher than their 10-year growth rate. I think that wouldn't be unjustified going forward. I think that is a fairly reasonable, probably leaning towards more the optimistic side of the scale, but still reasonable growth assumption going forward. So growth rate of 17% going forward over the next decade, discount rate of 9%, earnings per share figure, $6.04. What is our price target? A price target of $186.62. Fairly good. Fairly reasonable. You know, 12% upside, that's fairly healthy, but it's not outstanding. You know, buying a, a wonderful business at a fair price, that's exactly what that is. Buy a wonderful business, buy at a fair price, that's what that valuation would be. But what if we got more bullish? What if we thought for a second, we thought, okay, let's say the Apple car comes to fruition. Let's say they initiate and they execute well on that ARVA headset. Let's say people demand... People's demand for Apple products continues to grow steadily over time. The service business continues to get built out. Let's say that happens. If that was to happen, do you think a 20% growth rate would be unjustified? That's just slightly above the five-year growth rate, well below the one-year growth rate. Do you think it would be unjustified? I don't think so. I think when you take into account all these secular trends, all these favorable factors, not only within the business, but also outside of it, 20% growth executing consistently and well on all the growth opportunities going forward, 20% wouldn't be unjustified. So if we input that, and a 20% growth rate gives us a price target of $229.57. And 28, 29% upside. So a very advantageous bet. You know, it's a mix. I think that growth rate is probably too high. I think a more reasonable growth rate will probably be more around 17%. I'm sticking with that. As my current price target, price target of 186 and 62 cents, still very, very advantageous buy, but not as advantageous as some other opportunities within the marketplace. I think when I look at this valuation relative to Google, you think that Google's 30, 40% undervalued right now, that's more advantageous bet. But you can never, and I have learned this from my very beginning of investing, you can never count Apple out. You can never discount the value of that business. You can never say that Apple is done because it'll prove you wrong. It's proved me wrong time and time again. The number of people who've been pessimistic on this business 
and yet it continues to grow. It continues to create free cash flow. It continues to compound and build up over time despite the doubt around the business. That is the measure of a truly extraordinary company. A company that, despite the doubt, despite the haters around it, can continue to grow and continue to compound over time. That's the type of business you want to own. And so Apple, a wonderful business trading at a fair price. The profitability is there. The financial strength is there. Everything you look for in a wonderful business is there. And to round it all out, you know it's unaffected by negative extrinsic factors. Even when things like this happen, even when things like that happen, the company still exudes an immense degree of financial strength, uncompromising quality, and immensely high quality business. Apple is world class. It continues to be world class. It continues to be a very, very advantageous long-term bet. So if you enjoyed this video, if you hope you learned something more about Apple as a company, as a business, then please drop us a like down below. Hit subscribe if you haven't already. If there's a company you want me to talk about in the next video, then please comment down below and I'll see if I can get onto it. But until then, thank you. I'll see you in the next one.